A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail. There was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, it was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now is salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of the anointed, for the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before our God day and night. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, love for life did not deter them from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Verbum Domini. In the sight of the angels I sing your praises, Lord. I would give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I sing your praise. I worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your power, promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. All the kings of the earth will shall give thanks to you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, they shall sing of the ways of your Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do his will. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Fabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Johannum. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him and said, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? <clears throat> Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the tree. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you will see heaven and open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, first of all, this Mass is for your intention, and we ask the, the uh, intercession of the archangels, the protection of the archangels on all that we do. On this date, the Church remembers the three archangels mentioned in Scripture by name, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Michael's name literally means who can compare to God. He manifests God's power and might by battling Satan, the huge dragon, the ancient serpent of Revelation 12, casting him from heaven. Michael guards the people of God, uh, defends the souls of the just, and bears, in their, bears them to their and bears them to their final judgment. In 1886, Pope Leo XIII compared, uh, composed a prayer to St. Michael, which was said at the end of every Mass for many years. And, of course, we say that prayer at the end of every single Mass we celebrate. Those who follow me know that. And, of course, I pray to St. Michael prayer numerous times over the course of the day for protection. And yet, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as I posted on social media this morning, um, that I'm celebrating this Mass for the restoration of my patience and peace because I allowed social media and many other things, some things with one of my dogs and, uh, and, and other things get the best of me, a loss of patience, a loss of peace. And so I said, well, I need to, you know, prayer, the liturgy, the hour is not enough. Prayer is not enough. I need to celebrate Mass. Um, and so I'm celebrating Mass and asking our Lord for the restoration of my peace and my patience. And indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this battle between good and evil, 
uh, is something that we deal with every single day, can escalate at any given moment, not just vacillate from day to day, but from moment to moment, right? And uh, the evil one will try and attack us uh, at any given moment. Now, one of the things that struck me about today's readings, uh, Revelation chapter 12, and again, uh, we hear this, all right? War broke out in heaven. This is after the deceiver of the world, the ancient dragon called the devil and Satan, attacks the woman, described as Our Lady of Guadalupe in Revelation chapter 12, pregnant with the child who ruled the world with an iron rod, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These scripture scholars, so-called scholars, who say it's not Our Lady of Guadalupe, or uh, it's not the Blessed Mother, it's not, it's it, that it's some type of metaphor, no. It's in the mind of God. God knows no time and space. But it's in the mind of God. And that is the beginning of the battle between good and evil, right? And of course, I am in this battle between good and evil, the battle uh, that Satan wages against the unborn, against families, against marriage, but uh, uh, but particularly, all right, this original battle between uh, Satan and the unborn. Right. The uh, uh, and and that that's what we're dealing with, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So I need to be uh, aware even more and and be conscious of my pet peeves. So I was thinking about that this morning. My pet peeves or or my greatest weaknesses. My greatest weaknesses are absolutely positively my thoughts, impure thoughts, immoral thoughts, judgmental thoughts, angry thoughts, right? Uh, uncharitable thoughts uh, that uh, come and uh, come. And I, I mean, even to the point where I conjure up these crazy stories of people being uncharitable and judging them. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that's why I say the act of contrition so many times a day when I recognize that my thoughts are running away with me. And then, of course, uh, the, these um, uh, uh, buttons that get pushed, uh, people constantly criticizing the ordinary form of the mass, right? To lift up the traditional Latin mass over and above the ordinary form of the mass. I can understand how people are upset and angry because the traditional Latin mass is being suppressed. Of course, I oppose the suppression of any valid mass, and the traditional Latin mass is a valid mass, but it's not a superior mass, all right? There's no superior, inferior mass. The mass is the mass focused around the consecration, focused around the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Christ, Emmanuel, truly is with us. God is with us. So, so if that happens during the Mass, if it's a valid Mass and that happens during the Mass, there can be not one Mass that is more significant, more important, a better or more valid Mass than another Mass. Let's get that through our heads. And these people, all right, who, who purport to be holier than thou, I say the competition for holiest than thou, uh, who think that somehow, uh, uh, we need to go back, all right, to the Latin Mass, um, exclusively the Latin Mass. As you can see, they look down on the ordinary form of the Mass. It's just ridiculous. Uh, it's simplistic. They don't know the faith. They don't know church history. They don't even know recent church history, like, for instance, the last hundred years of church history. Um, and so that's one of my pet peeves. Another one of my pet peeves is people who just blindlessly or mindlessly just accept some ridiculous way of thinking because it sounds good. It suits their their rationale. Like, for instance, uh, Biden is a puppet, as if somebody's pulling Biden's strings, right? Uh, no, that's ridiculous. Nobody, and you can't see that Biden, nobody's pulling Biden's strings because if they were pulling his strings, he would have been out of this race already, right? But the fact that he's still in this race shows that 
uh, nobody's pulling his strings. So you need to get your mind around that. This guy is an evil guy, a depraved guy, and nobody controls him. And this is the most dangerous aspect of this political journey. We see what he's doing. He is more than willing to do anything to maintain power, including obliterating all of his competition, ignoring even his friends, right? Um, and believe me, the hatred within the Democratic Party, the liberal movement is, you can almost taste it. They hate each other. They hate us. They hate each other. Uh, they would destroy each other if it meant uh, maintaining power. But they have to tolerate what's going on now because maintaining power is the most important thing to them. And they will rob. They will steal. They will cheat. They will lie, all right, to maintain power. They will cause wars. They will manage murder people. They will obliterate their competition all right, to maintain power. Have no misunderstanding about this. And the leader is right now, uh, unfortunately, Joe Biden, as much as there's other political forces in the Democratic Party that rue the day they allowed uh, Joe Biden to run for president. If they knew that they were able to win in 2020, there's no way they would have allowed a Biden Biden to run for president or Kamala Harris. So it's thought processes like this. People who just buy into stuff that sounds good, uh, sounds good. And you see it all over social media, ridiculous stuff. Uh, I, I talked to a pro-life leader yesterday, talked to him about the rally for personhood, uh, uh, abolishing abortion uh, from uh, uh, through constitutional personhood, and he had no understanding of it whatsoever. All right, has never gotten his mind around it. It is just, it, it's mind boggling, right? And that's not as bad as the pro-life leadership uh, that are just ignoring this, just ignoring this and going about business as usual because they're very comfortable in the money that they make and the celebrity that they've obtained. Um, and, and so these are just a few of my pet peeves, but all these converged on me this morning. Uh, and uh, again, I immediately or didn't immediately recognize, but at whatever point I recognized, I said, I have to celebrate Mass to restore my peace, to restore my patience. And this is what it means. This is what we have to do to focus on Jesus. See, when our thoughts run wild with us and we start acting out, acting badly, being uncharitable, we lose our focus on Jesus. And then we need to redirect ourselves to Jesus. And so that's how uh, what I'm trying to do with this Mass, Eucharistic Adoration after Mass, and then again the finishing of my prayers, including my Rosary and Divine Mercy Chaplet this morning. Uh, so St. Michael the Archangel, uh, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. And we ask St. Michael.